okay i'm back again back again with another how to fix a giants video this video you see the thumbnail we're going to be talking about the tight ends now talking about the tight ends this year makes me extremely angry extremely angry going into the season you have darren waller you picked up darren waller for a third round pick you have daniel belliger coming off a promising rookie season expectations are very high you have some good backups as far as the tight end goes going into the training in, into training camp and then boom what happens injury after injury after injury we played most of the season with only two tight ends on on, on the roster or healthy you know we had we had cager for a little bit cager ends up getting released right now going into the season we have two tight ends two tight ends going into 2024 we have darren waller and we have daniel bellinger now i was looking at the stats from actually you really don't even have to look at the stats you know that the impact that we should have had that we should have from the tight end room was absolutely not there it wasn't there so just looking at some of the stats darren waller had 52 catches for 552 yards and only one touchdown on the season when we picked up darren waller i thought i thought you know red zone we have somebody a target talk throw, throw it up there alley oops touchdowns that's what we're going to get from Darren Waller. You know, up the scene, you know, spread defenses out. You know, opening things up uh, underneath for the wide receivers, you know, for, for the slot receivers, you know. Taking attention away from everybody else. That's what I thought when we got Darren Waller. That is exactly how I thought he should have been used. And we didn't see that. Obviously, we had issues with the offensive line. You got Darren Waller coming inside and doing a lot of blocking. Then he ultimately gets hurt with the whole bad hamstring or is it really the nerves or this that and the third so we here's the thing before darren waller even got hurt he should have had what his stat line was at the end of the season he got hurt right around what what was it week seven six by the time he should already had you know those 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 500 yards or something close to it no way no way by the end of the season should he have had only one touchdown and only 500 yards I thought at least, at least you're looking at 700 yards for Darren Waller. And that's because Daniel Jones is Daniel Jones. I thought even though Daniel Jones is Daniel Jones, Darren Waller would absolutely be a target. And we got teased. We got teased all through training camp. We got teased in that one drive in the preseason. They went to him three straight times and the New York Giants ended up scoring. You know, I, I was jaded. I fell victim to that. I drank the Kool-Aid. And then when I think about uh, Daniel Bellinger, again, a promising rookie season. He didn't blow the doors off. A promising rookie season. Der uh, Daniel Bellinger, he gave us in 2023, I have my notes here, 25 receptions, 255 yards, zero touchdowns. Now, here's the thing. 52 catches for Darren Waller, averaging about 10 yards per catch. Daniel Bellinger, averaging about 10 yards per catch. Um, I think it wasn't fair what happened to Daniel Bellinger. Obviously, he was going to take a step down in his role because Darren Waller was here. But we didn't even get a chance to use Bellinger the way that we should have been. We saw glimpses. We saw glimpses where he was out there and, and had the ability to make plays. We knew that. We knew that from his rookie year. So now we're sitting here with two tight ends on the roster. One guy making about $11 million in 2024. The other one making just under a $1 million for 2024. And I'm thinking about, okay, so how do we attack this tight end rule? How do we do this? I definitely don't want to do it through free agency. I definitely don't. Um, looking at the free agency list, some guys that are on that list, you have, you have guys like Dalton Schultz, who's probably going to go back to the Texans. You have Gerald Everett for the Rams, a little bit older. Um, you have Noah Fant. He's probably the most intriguing on this on, on this list for me. And then also Michael Gusecki. The one thing about these guys is that they're not trying to share snaps. A lot of these names that we're talking about, they're, they're like number one tight ends. They're not trying to share snaps, and they're definitely try, not trying to be possibly third on the totem pole. So with that being said to me, the best way to address the tight end situation is through the draft. A day three pick at tight end. And just like last year had a pretty strong tight end class, this year's not as strong as last year's. But it's not way off from last year as well. So when I'm looking at these tight ends, and I, I, have, an, I have a new agenda. If you've been following me since last year, last year I had a, an agenda for John Michael Schmitz. And I was trying to find a guy that I can, you know, build an agenda with. And I think I found that guy. And it's going to be a tight end. Actually, you know what? Let me get through these rookies first, and I'll come back to who my guy is as far as it. So, obviously, one of the tight ends 
uh, Brock Bowers. Brock Bowers is a tight end, obviously in the draft, probably the best tight end, you know, that came out in a long time. The New York Giants are not getting Brock Bowers. We're not wasting the first round pick on a tight end. I don't think we're wasting a, a day one or day two pick on a tight end. So Brock Bowers, forget about it. Um, you have J. Tavion Sanders from Texas. He's looking like a possible, you know, second rounder, late second round guy. I don't know how he's going to do in the combine. Could he blow it up and possibly move himself further up? Possibly. We have two second round picks. I I doubt. I doubt that we we uh, use one of those picks on a tight end. I, I think the fan base will go crazy. Also, if you pick up a tight end in the second round when when it's all this other talent and, and way more needs. Um, but for me, day three, day three is the sweet spot. Uh, fourth to fifth round, mostly fifth round. Those are the guys that I'm looking at, and I'm going to get right into a couple of names. Um, first name is going to be Ben Sinat out of Kansas State. Ben Sinat is a versatile tight end. Um, you can line him up inside. You can line him up outside. He's multiple threats. Um, can decent route runner, good hands. Um, can, can do a lot of things. Strong, um, good size. He, he He's a complete tight end, right? Fifth rounder. The guy that I like the most is, 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 is Dalen. Um, Dalen Holker. Uh, Dalen Holker is... is and I put out a tweet earlier today. I said he's the poor man's Jeremy Shockey. Poor man's Shockey is what, and that's high praise. I understand, no, he's not Jeremy Shockey. But when I watch uh, Dalen, uh, Dalen Hoker, I'm looking at his attitude, his skill set. Um, when the ball is in the air, it's his. He acts like it's his. It belongs to him. He's coming down with the ball when he's targeted. And when you look at Dalen Hawker, to me, that's a guy that the New York that make, just makes sense for the New York Giants because again, a lot of these guys in the free agency. They want to be, you know, either the number one tight end, number two tight end. We need a guy that we need to bring to this team that's that's willing to get into this rotation with uh, uh Waller, with Bellinger. And a guy like Dalen Hawker, again, is my sleeper, my new agenda. It's one of my agendas right now. We're still early in the in the whole scouting season, prospect season. That is one of the guys that I'm looking for, or looking looking for the New York Giants to target in this upcoming draft. Yeah, so that that so to, to wrap this up, and I guess to summarize this whole video, the New York Giants need to address the tight end position. We're probably not going to do that, or we're not going to probably spend big money on the free agent tight end. If they want to bring in a lower a lower level guy like a Vanette or bring back a guy like Hudson, that's fine. But if you want to find another viable, viable target in, in this in this tight end this offseason, it has to be through the draft. You got to get one of these young guys. And for me, a guy like Ben Sinat, a guy like even Theo Johnson from Penn State, but Dalen Hoker is my guy, is, is the guy that I'm looking for the New York Giants to call his name, possibly in the fifth round if he's still there. I'm hoping he doesn't blow up the Senior Bowl or, or the Combine because he can easily move up. If you're looking at the tape, he played at Colorado State, not a lot of exposure. Also played at BYU before transferring to Colorado State. Um, but if you get a chance to look him out, look, I mean, look, if you get a chance to look into this guy, go ahead and look into Dalen Hoker out of um, Colorado State. Fantastic player. Um, the first time I really noticed him uh, was the Colorado versus Colorado State game. And um, I was intrigued by him. And then I got back into, you know, the offseason now looking at prospects. And again, that guy is a, a full on um, a full on threat when it comes to being a tight end. Just just the attitude alone. You can see it when he plays the toughness and stuff like that. And he's not afraid to talk to. That's why I called him a poor man shocky. But um, again, that's going to be the video talking about the tight end strategy for the offseason. How do we fix these tight ends or how do we fix the tight end room? And that's uh, pretty much my thoughts on that. So I want to thank everybody for vibing with me. Please like, comment and subscribe. And from one Giants fan to another, this is Big Dash Knows, Big Blue Nation. Let's go.